Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to the channel. This is Kavi the Guru and today I'm going to follow up. I saw some comments and I want to address them. So I'm going to follow up how to install games that are larger than four gigabytes over FTP using FileZilla. That way you don't have to worry about getting a USB stick and extracting the PKG and laying out the folder structure properly. We don't have to do any of that. We're just going to take the PKG and send it directly over to the PS3 over Ethernet using our PC and our PS3. Now, if that ha if that means that you have to disconnect from the internet, what I would say is, well, if you use ethernet to connect to the internet in your house with your PC, whatever, download all of the PKG files that you want, disconnect from the internet, and connect that ethernet cable from your PC to the PS3. This is the easiest way, the most bulletproof method, and I'm not gonna cover any other method because it doesn't even make sense to do it because the speeds aren't even realistic in 2023. So we're only going to cover direct from PC to PS3 using FileZilla and let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna have you do is set up the network connections in Windows. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here. So this is network connections, which you can do, the, the easiest way to make this happen is you go into search, go into Windows search. If you're on Windows 11, that would be in the middle here. So this would be Windows search. And you just type in network, okay? Type in network. Now. You can view network connections. That's what you want. So you click view network connections. Okay, and it will open this window right here. Okay. Pretty easy, rather self-explanatory. It's, it's not it's not that crazy. So it'll open up this window here. Right? Alright, so which what, what you get here, what you want to do is you want to go to Wi-Fi. If you're on Wi-Fi, you want to go to properties. And then just go to internet connection sharing and click allow other network users to connect to this computer's internet connection. That'll circumvent the crossover cable nonsense in most instances. I always check allow other network users to control or disable the shared internet connection just in case it's provisioning issues. There shouldn't be at all ever. There really ever are, if any. But just check it anyway. Rather be proactive than reactive and avoid troubleshooting rather than have to troubleshoot. So you make sure those two are enabled. You click OK. I'm going to click cancel because mine were already enabled. Now follow this step by step, and I promise it'll work. Go to the Ethernet, all right? So you go to your, your Ethernet adapter. Mine is a killer E3000 2.5 gigabit, because I have an Alienware, yours might say Broadcom, yours could say whatever it is, but you go to your Ethernet connection. It'll say Ethernet, so it's, it's kind of hard to miss. Once you get there, you right click that, you go to properties. You go to internet protocol version four tcp ip v4 that's where you want to go okay once you get there you click properties i want you to go to use the following ip address so instead of clicking obtain click use the following ip address please do this follow along very carefully and very slowly and i promise it'll work i'm going to keep reiterating that to give you the confidence to listen to me and when it says ip address is type 1.1.1.1 and then subnet mask 255.255.255.0 if you don't know what 255.255.255.0 is it's, 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 it's like it's, it's too much it's set up all the time it's a subnet mask that's used for many different things. Just 255.255.255.0. Just do that. Boom. Done. Finished. Finished. We're good. Okay. And then we click OK. And then we click Close. Okay. So now that that's done, that is the computer setup side. Quick, easy, simple. You don't have to do anything else. Let's go to the PlayStation, shall we? Pew. Okay. We're at the PlayStation. Grab my handy dandy six axis. Remember, don't just get any DualShock 3 get a six axis what you want to do is hop on over to the playstation here boop, 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 boop. and you will go to settings then network settings then we go to internet connection settings now i already set mine up but i'm going to do it again for the purposes of the video and to help you out for accuracy purposes so you're going to go to custom not easy custom we're going to go to wired connection we're going to go to auto detect then we're going to go to manual so when you get to ip address setting manual all right so what we're going to do is we're going to give our playstation an ip address so that we can it can be contacted from filezilla right 
so because the PC is the host and the PlayStation is what's being contacted the client so 1.1.1.2 now I'll reiterate that in dot form because a lot of people like dot one dot one dot one dot two that is going to be your IP address okay that is a good IP address that you can use all over the internet and no one's gonna connect your stuff don't want to curse subnet mask is what we said it was before two five five two five five two five five zero all right our router identification 1.0.0.0 you can see all this on the screen but I'm gonna look in the screen and say it too so you can understand then our primary DNS is 1.1.1.1 1 our secondary DNS is 1.1.1.1 1 1 okay okay good after you set all of that, set it up in here. You can see it on the screen. You can pause the video for all I care. I'm not going anywhere. I'm part of the video. You're not talking to me in real life. Just to recap, because I like to recap in my videos. A lot of people don't do that. You put the IP address 1.1.1.2, subnet mask 255.255.255.0. Default router is 1.0.0.0. Primary DNS 1.1.1.1. Secondary DNS 1.1.1.1. Okay. So then you hit the right button, right D-pad. Okay. Hit right on your D-pad, I meant to say. MTU automatic proxy server do not set UPnP enable okay then you hit X after everything was good you hit X test connection now we didn't need to test the connection Y so we just hit circle now we're gonna go to multi man okay so make sure you've enabled hen that is very important I have a bunch of games on here that I haven't played games in a couple of days but I have so many when I get back to gaming, when I get some time off in a couple months, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go nuts. All right, so go to enable hen. All right, so make sure you've enabled hen. I already did on this system. Um, once hen is enabled, go into multi man. And if you followed my tutorial, you'll know how to install multi man, or you'll have multi man installed. If not, look at the card right up there, and it'll show you how to install multi man and everything. Once multi man loads, what you're gonna do is you're probably gonna start off at the game. Uh, folder the game icon you want to scroll all the way over to the left and then you want to go to uh, the settings menu so once you get to settings it's very important go to FTP service so let's scroll down together you're gonna to go over to settings down 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 FTP service you're gonna hit X on that you're not gonna hit disable or enable one minute two minute three minute four five six seven eight nine ten you're not gonna do any of that what you're gonna do is you're gonna once again come into here you're not gonna hit disable or anything else what you're gonna hit is Enable with no timeout. That is it. That is all you're doing in multi-man. That is it. That is it. That's all you're doing here. Then you're just going to take this controller. You're just going to put it down and leave it alone. You're not going to touch anything. You're going to leave multi-man open. And we're going to go back to the computer and get everything handled. So now we're back at the PC. And you have to download FileZilla. So I don't think I have to show you how to do that. But if I... Why not? It's not going to hurt. Right? It's not going to hurt. Okay, so I opened up my web browser. It is Firefox. What you're gonna do once you get into Firefox, you're gonna go to google.com. I'm trying to make this easy for everybody. Remember, I'm covering all spectrums, not just for the nerds, not just for the tech heads, for everyone, for people who aren't necessarily tech savvy, so they can do this too and learn and begin to go on this journey with us. So, open up Google, type in google.com, and now I'm going to type in FileZilla. So, FileZilla. Okay, hit enter. You're gonna click this one right here, download FileZilla client. So you want that's what you want to download. So click download FileZilla client. Right there, you click that download FileZilla client. Again, just click it and download it. Unless you're on Mac OS X or or Linux or whatever, that's fine. You download a different version, but generally speaking, most of us are on Windows that are watching these jailbreaking tutorials. So if you need a specific tutorial, just let me know for a specific operating system. I have them all. Okay, so boom, FileZilla is done downloading. So I'm gonna open that up and install it. I'm not gonna do it actually on here, but for you guys, just open up FileZilla by clicking the file, click run, as you can see, oh wait, here we go. You open it up, so you can get you on display here. Yeah, okay, you click run. And then you'll see the setup. You said I agree and you just continue to install FileZilla, okay? Once FileZilla is installed, we're gonna come back to here. It'll open up just like this, just like you see on my screen right here. This is FileZilla here. 
and once you've opened up FileZilla and you get to this screen, what you're going to want to do is go ahead and type in the host IP address. Okay, so what we're going to type in for the PS3 is where it says host right up here, right up here. Follow my mouse. Follow my mouse. It says one dot one dot one dot two. Well, it, it, it's saying it now, not it says, but it's supposed to be 1.1.1.2. So you type that in. You're going to hit quick connect. Now, when you hit quick connect, you might get something about security and TLS security. Click OK, that's fine. So hit quick connect. I'm going to abort my previous connection. And then boom. Okay, so look, now I am directly connected to my PS3. These are the folders that come up. I have a USB plugged into mine, so dev USB is there. But this is this is your PS3 right here. So don't but don't get all worked up and scared. It's okay. It's it's just the game console. You'll be fine. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to uh, navigate to where our packages are. And no PayStation. Okay, remember the, the, the tutorial I showed you before was no PayStation. Alright, so I basically have to go to my downloads folder and then go to no PayStation. Okay. So that's where mine is located. But remember in the previous video, I showed you how to set up a no PlayStation folder and where your games will be downloaded and extracted. If you didn't get to see the previous tutorial, please look up at the card right here and it'll teach you how to do no PlayStation and download games and all that good stuff. Now, what you're gonna do is go to your game folder and I'm gonna go to packages. And then I have two games in here. I have White Knight Chronicles and I have Yakuza 4. Those are some good ones, those are some good ones. So whatever games you have, whatever PKGs you have, that's where you're going to go. You're going to go to your no PlayStation folder. You're going to go to your packages and then you're going to see your games. OK, now you don't have to do anything with the formats or anything like that because it doesn't matter because we're going to FTP them. So we don't need any special formatted drives. You don't need a fat 32 thumb drive. You don't need an NTFS hard drive that has it enabled and sectors cleaned and all that. We don't need all that. So what we're going to do is go to, to the right side of this, which as you can see, I was on the left. That's where my games are. This is the right side now. Now I'll make it a little uh, see if I can files a little bigger here so you see it a little better all right so what we're gonna do is we are going to as you can see the games are on the left we're gonna go to dev hdd0 that's our internal hard drive for our playstation 3 so let's go to dev hdd0 and then you can see we have all these folders the only folder you're worried about is packages and ex data because remember what i told you ex data is what you use to bypass excuse me a lot of the stuff with the network provisioning on playstation 3 so you can just play the game without having to do any modifications and packages are obviously where your games are going to go so you can use pkg or you can use the package packages when i transfer over to my playstation i use the pkg simply because multi-man can, can recognize that they'll it'll recognize the pkg folder and then it'll make it easy. It'll mount the PKGs and make it easier to install for you. So what I'm going to do is let's go to PKG and let's open up the PKG folder. I already have a bunch of games in here, as you can see. Uh, most of these I've downloaded already, so I should probably delete them. However, I'm not going to delete them right now. What I'm going to do is transfer over, let's say, let's say White Knight Chronicles. So it's a little smaller. 17 gigs. However, I'm going to take it and just drag it into the PKG folder and i will show you here as you can see it is transferring at a rate of 21 megabytes per second now that's fast that is way faster than you're going to get on anything else so it's going to take me approximately 12 minutes to transfer a 17 gigabyte file over to the playstation that's kind of beautiful right so while that's going on let's go take a look at the playstation and see what it looks like all right, so now we're just gonna wait for White Knight Chronicles to finish. It's about 11 minutes, so go get a coffee. Just kidding, I'm not gonna make you watch the whole 11 minutes. I'm just gonna get the cut to it, but if you wanna pause now and go get a drink or go get a bathroom, go get a bathroom. You can pause now if you want, what I'm trying to say. But you used the bathroom or did whatever you had to do, got a cup of coffee, but White Knight Chronicles has about, what, seven seconds left, so it's time to show you, once it's on your PS3, how to take that game and install it okay so you make sure your head is enabled all of that good stuff and now we got to do is go into multi-man so we're going to go into multi-man let's just open it really quick let's go over here 
all the way down to multi-man. It's usually at the bottom. So let's go into multi-man. And then we will... We wait. We wait. We feast. Alright, now we have to install the package file. It's a pretty simple process. I'm just going to break it down super quick for you. Once you're back into multi-man, you're going to come over to the, the home little thing here. The MMSCM. That's like the little home thing. You want to go there. Once you do that, you want to go all the way down to install package files. It's just a couple of clicks. With your D-pad, down to install package files. We're going to find the game we just transferred over, which would be White Knight Chronicles. So we're just going to hit up on a D-pad since it starts with a W. It's alphabetical order. You can go all the way down if you want, or you can do it my way. Just, just press up since it's alphabetical order. And we're going to hit X on, X on White Knight Chronicles 2. And then we're going to hit triangle in order to install that. Now what's going to happen, it's going to take us back out. Okay, as you can see, it now booted us back out to the main cross media bar. The reason that happened is because it mounted the PKG so that we can install it. We're gonna now navigate to that and get the installation going. So you're gonna have to go all the way up, depending on how much stuff you have installed. I have a lot, some people have little, but you're just gonna go up until you get to the package manager. You're gonna go and install package files. Then you're going to go to Standard. White Knight Chronicles is the newest thing, so it's right up the top. Isn't that great? So we're just going to hit X on that and begin the installation. Very simple. But remember that you have to transfer over the EX data. So if you want to do that via USB or if you just want to do it via FTP, as you saw, it's very simple. You just take the EX data folder and you drag it over to HDD0 where we installed the game. Instead of doing it in the packages folder though, you just make sure you drag the EX data folder straight over. You know what? I'm going to show you really quick. What you want to do is hit these three dots here, leaving the game folder. That'll take you back to the packages and EX data folder. On the right side, however, you also want to hit the two dots and that'll bring you back out to the root of the HDD0 folder, which is the internal drive for the PlayStation. And what you want to go ahead and do is open up e uh, EXData, is what I like to do. And I'll open up EXData over here. And instead of trying to find which one, you can do it by date modified. You know, you can click last modified. But but what I would just go ahead and do because the files are so small is just go ahead and drag them over. So just drag the, the files over from here to the other side. I mean, you can't go, I'm not going to do it, but you go over there. It's not going to take that long because the files are so small. And then we'll go back over to the PlayStation and figure it out from there. So now we're going to go back up to our folder, our package manager folder. We're going to click X on package manager. Again, we're going to click X on install package files. We're going to go to standard and click X on that. White Knight Chronicles 2 will be at the top. We hit X on White Knight Chronicles 2. It will install those 17 gigabytes depending on the speed of your hard drive. If you threw an SSD in there with an upgrade or if you just upgraded to a 7200 RPM as opposed to a 5400 RPM. If you have a one terabyte versus a 128, if your sectors are good or not, everything can influence how fast it installs. But it generally for something that's 17 gigs or above, you're talking 15 to 30 minutes. Once it finishes installing, the icon will pop up and you'll be able to play it. So I'm glad that you were able to follow this tutorial. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to let me know. I deeply appreciate you coming by and stopping and returning if you're returning to follow these videos. I made these to address comments that I received in other videos. They were not negative. They just wanted to know how to do certain things. So hopefully this helped out and hopefully this teaches new people. Please like and subscribe and drop a comment with any questions or comments or concerns or troubleshooting that may need to be done. If you would like to see any specific tutorials, that'd be great. I'm willing to do them. I'm going to do Nintendo Switch soon. Nintendo Switch OLED, which is a hardware mod, which is crazy. I'm going to do Wii U soon. I mean, any system you want. I have a PS2. I have to teach uh, free McBoot and all that stuff. I'm going to teach it really comprehensively and without the baby talk, like I like to say. I even have like hardware modded stuff here at this uh, Atari Lynx, this bad boy right here. The funny thing about this Lynx is that it has a mod here, it has a USB-C port on the back, I put a rechargeable battery mod in here, and I updated the screen. So I do a lot of different kind of modding. If you're interested, just let me know in the comments and I'll address that. But anyway, enough about the Atari Lynx. Thank you for coming. Please like and uh, subscribe over here. 
if you have any questions comments or concerns like i said drop them down there in the comments and you can just comment if you want to be nice i appreciate you there will be many more tutorials and fun things to come love you guys and thank you for your support have a good one